dollar, dollar, dollar. Dirt and money, no soul. Had to go and get it, ain't no time to kick it. Got a stack of flip for my foes. Dollar, 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 dollar. Please tell me you can hear me. Don't turn your back and don't neglect me. Just let me know if you need me. Dollar, 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 dollar. Let me watch out for my partners. Keep my money long, get my team strong. Let me run away from my problems. Yo, what's good, original crew? It's your boy DJ New Kid, your girl. Sierra Nicole. Back on the channel, man. We got NASA engineer claims demon attacked him. You think this can be real? Like, you know what I'm saying? Or I mean, that's his, it's his story. It's, or her or it's him. It's his story. So I don't know. <laughs> you never know. You know what I'm saying? You never know. <laughs> I don't know. Like, it depends on the part, the place. Yeah. The situation. Mm -hmm. If I could believe it or not, you know. I mean, no, no. Some stories be real and it'd be like Well some story be exaggerated. Or that. You know what I'm saying? Some people like to exaggerate the truth. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> oh, did you I'll tell you about that later. Yeah. It was about uh you can tell it was me about later. this nerd guy. I can I cannot remember. Okay, you can tell me later. <laughs> but oh, uh, with that being said, Make sure you check out the links in the description box. Down below. You already know where to go, man. You want to first support, all you have to do is check it out down below. Also, if you enjoyed today's video. Like it with a thumbs up. That's all we ask, man. Let's go. Let's get into this one. Let's check it out. Let's see what it's about. The primary criticism of virtually every paranormal story out there is a lack of credibility. Either the person claiming the events happened lacks credibility themselves, or you just don't have any other corroborating evidence, like other people that witnessed it, other credible people that witnessed it. Or, in many cases, a lack of video or photo proof that said paranormal event happened. True. But in the case of the story today, you not only have a highly credible witness, a NASA robotics engineer... You also have other corroborating witnesses that are from that NASA engineer's family that were there and witnessed it with him. And you have, albeit limited, you do have video footage of what they are claiming happened that was paranormal. But before we get into all of that in today's story, if you are a fan of the strange, dark, and mysterious delivered in story format, well, that's what my channel is all about, and I upload three to four times a week. So if that's your thing, if you could gently pulverize the like button and then turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of my uploads every week. All right, let's get into it. Bill Vale has oh, always man. been in... Damn, this early ball. <laughs> we ain't even no intro. No, I said the quality goes for Oh, this early, this early balling. What? I know 1080p, girl. This early balling. Surprised he had a green screen. Incredibly scientifically minded. He's always had technical jobs his whole life. He took a job for 15 years at NASA as a robotics engineer. He also spent a little time as a pilot for NASA as well. He is just somebody that is very process oriented. And, and in fact, his family and friends, they say this with respect, but they say that, you know, Bill, he lacks an imagination. He's just He's super pragmatic, super to the point, and doesn't really have time for, call it creativity. He's all about facts. In 2002, Bill and his wife separate, and it catches Bill a little bit off guard. And it almost prompts like a midlife crisis for him where, you know, before it had been really his work with NASA uh, that had been fulfilling to him. And now he has this huge gap in his life and suddenly, you know, he's looking around and he's like, what am I doing all this for? I don't have a family anymore. Like, what am I doing? And so he decides to move back home to Arlington, Texas, where his little brother lived. So when he gets to Arlington, he feels like he can have a fresh start in a way. You know, it's he has family around, so he doesn't feel quite as lonely. And he actually just takes a job at his brother's water purification company because he wasn't sure what he was going to do. He just knew that he needed to do something. So he gets a job at this water purification company and he starts working with his brother. And he finds that even though it's not the same type of work that he was doing as a robotics engineer at NASA, it was nice to be working day in and day out with a family member. So Bill has only been living in Arlington for just a couple of months and he had only been at the water purification company for maybe a couple of weeks. And so when a Saturday house call was called into the company and no one really wanted to do it, Bill thought, you know what, I'll, I'll take one for the team, make a good impression on my coworkers and I'll take the house call. 
And what it involved is, is part of Bill's job was to go demonstrate how to install and use this water purification system in customer's home. The dispatcher for the water purification company said to Bill, she goes, hey, listen, this is a little bit weird, but the person who called was adamant that you be there at five o'clock, not a minute earlier, not a minute later. And it was probably only about three o'clock in the afternoon. And he's like, so what do I do? And she's like, I don't know, like go get a bite to eat and just make sure you're there by five. And so he does that. He's like, that's weird. But he drives around and he parks outside of the house a little ways down the street. And a couple minutes before five, he gets out and he starts heading over to the property to do this, this house call. He starts walking up the path to this, this big brick house at like 4.59. And as he's getting closer to the steps, he can hear through the front door, which you can already tell it's slightly open. It's not latched all the way. He can hear screaming inside of this house. It sounds like a woman screaming and it actually sounds like she's screaming, get out of here. But he doesn't really know what to make of it. He has a job to do. So he walks up to the door and even though it's open, he knocks. And now he can literally hear through the crack in the door that someone in this house is screaming and he's listening. And finally he decides, well, I should probably just open it up and make sure everything's okay. Cause I can hear someone screaming inside the doors open. So he opens it up and he walks inside. He takes one step inside of the residence and just kind of peeks around and he can see a little bit down the hall off to the right, there's an, an opening to a room. And in the room are three men on their knees uh, in a little circle and a woman is walking around them in a circle and she's holding a book in her hand and she's speaking in tongues, just nonsensical, couldn't make sense of her language, but periodically as she's circling them and she's touching each of their heads, she's screaming, get out of here leave these people get out of here bill is about to leave he knows that this is just too weird for him but right before he does the woman who's walking around the three men on the ground looks up at him and points directly at him and doesn't break eye contact and just holds her finger out pointing at him and he gets this very strange sense that like this one this probably would don't tell me this a whole motherfucker set up and she she said don't come before don't come a minute before five don't come a minute after five. You leave the door open because you know you're expecting somebody at five o'clock. You already got something going on because that was already pre-scheduled. Mm. Are you trying to fucking whatever they got in them trying to send it to it my way? I ain't asked for this shit out there to do a job. That is messed up though. Yeah. Like, nah. Nah, sh I don't fuck with folks like that, bruh. <laughs> That's a whole setup, bro. You, I'm walking into a setup. I ain't asked for it. Thanks. Yeah, baby. Contact and just holds her finger out, pointing at him. And he gets this very strange sense that, like, this woman wants to do harm to him. And so he just runs out the door and is like, yeah, I'm not going back in there. Goes back to his car and he calls the dispatcher back at the water purification company. And he's like, okay. I just took an insane house call. The lady in there is crazy. I'm not doing it. Don't reschedule. And if you do, do not put me on it because I will not go in there. Bill was a very straightforward guy and he's just not going to let his imagination run wild with what they were doing. You know, those people are crazy and that's not my business. It's not my problem. And so he forgot about it. He just goes home to his house and he turns on the TV and he gets his microwave dinner and he's just sitting there eating his food and just having a nice Saturday night to himself went out of the corner of his eye in, in this other room. And I keep in mind, Bill lives alone and has no pets. Mm. Out of the corner of his eye, he thinks he sees something small dart across the ground. He couldn't tell if it was flying through the room or if it was running through the room, but he just was like, oh, now I got you know some rodent or a bird or something in my house. It must've snuck in through the chimney. And so Bill is not scared, he's mostly like, frustrated that now he has to deal with some rodent in his house or some bird in his house. So he puts his food down and he turns on all the lights because he was watching TV with the lights off, turns on all the lights and just searches his house. He's like quiet, listening, trying to like hear where the thing went in his house and he can't hear anything. And after over an hour, uh, he just decides, well, geez, I, I don't know where it went. I don't know what it was. Maybe I didn't even see it in the first place. Mm. So that night he wakes up suddenly to what feels like some small creature running over the foot of his bed, but like over his foot. And it instantly wakes him up and he instinctively sucks his legs up to his chest under his covers. You know, as, as pretty much anybody would do when some random creature is running on your feet in the middle of the night. 
And he's like, great, this thing, it's probably now you can tell it's a rat, it's a, it's a rodent. He's like, great, now it's literally in my bedroom on my bed. And so he flips on the lights and now he's just mad because this is right in the middle of the night, it's the last thing he needs. And he lights on and he searches the room. He looks under you know, his dresser, he looks in the closet, he looks under his bed, he looks everywhere. And he can't find this thing, he can't, he's, he's stopping periodically to listen and he can't hear scurrying or anything. Did I imagine that as well? Because I mean, I guess I don't know if I saw something darting out of the corner of my eye when I was watching TV. I think I did, and just now, could, it, could that have been in my dream? You know, because he didn't, he wasn't really awake for it happening, he woke up to it and thought it's what happened. And so he's starting to like tell himself that, you know what, I'm somehow creating this weird thought in my head. Like, I probably didn't see anything downstairs, and I was probably having a dream about this, you know, rodent in my house, and that's what prompted the, the thought that something had touched my feet. And so he's like, all right, whatever. Turns off his lights, and he goes back to bed. So Bill falls back asleep, but shortly thereafter, he wakes up again when his bed is violently shaking. And he wakes up and his bed's shaking and it stops almost immediately once he's awake. Mm -hmm. And he thinks that they're having an earthquake. So he jumps out of his bed and he, he's looking around to see if like things are gonna start falling on him. He, he runs to the window, he looks outside, he can't tell what's going on. He, he runs into the other room and he can suddenly tell, because he's in a bit of a panic, that there is no more shaking happening. But the shaking's done, the house is totally silent. And he runs back to his, his bed and he has this thought like, could I in my sleep have shaken my bed? And he had one of those huge four poster beds and he's like trying to move it. And Bill's a big strong guy and he can barely move his bed. And he has this, like this memory of my bed was literally shaking. <laughs> and he's like, now this is three times that something strange has happened and I can't make sense of it. And, being a very kind of pragmatic person and not one with, as his family said, a wild imagination. He did not have that. He's like, okay, let's find out if there was an earthquake. So he goes online and he starts researching earthquakes. And he's thinking maybe if the earthquake had just happened that the, the news would break right then and there, some headline. There's nothing. And so he's like, okay, what other rational things could have caused my house to shake? Because again, there's no other damage in his house. Nothing fell. It was just, he, he felt the shaking and that was it. And so he starts researching like what's in the area and he finds that uh, there was a military base and actually it's an air base right near his house, a couple miles away. And he's thinking, okay, well, you know, when the fighter jets are taking off, that take off at all hours, maybe there's a sonic boom from, from one of the jets accelerating. And, and he didn't know if that was it, but he thought it could be it. And then he's like, oh, well, there's also all these oil rigs that are drilling in the area. Maybe there was an accident. So he's researching for, you know, recent accidents at, at oil rigs and he's just he's trying to find a rational explanation are you trying to find any excuse of what the, the cat is trying to use your mind you like bro and then it's the middle of the night and mm -hmm. i've been woke up how many times you know what i'm saying like i i gotta figure out something what what is keeping me up right because the last thing you're thinking about is something like the money something like, like that yeah like, but i ain't gonna lie my encounter with that big man bro you said what would you even have went in the house? No, me. Because you're there for a job. You know what I'm saying? You, you, that's your job. You're supposed to show up at a certain hour. You you hear screaming. What would you have done? Call the police. I ain't going to hold you. That's I, the first thing I would have done. Honey, I'm not entering up. no scene. No... And soon I hear anybody, a, a circle. And y'all, you doing what you, you doing? You weren't known about I, the circle until you went in. What's well, true? Because it was she. He said it was back in the room. Anyway, the door I saw the door crack. crack. Let me tell you, the door cracked open. I heard noise. It seems like something going. I'm you calling, heard get out. Get out. And, yeah. and a woman screaming. I'm calling the yeah. I'm calling the police. I'm not even Most entering up. the residence, bro. Because I'm not trying to even put myself in there, and I ain't trying. Because it sounds like she summoned the spirits onto him that was on. Bitch, so, I'm, it's already three or it's one. They three people dealing with one demon, or all three of these dealing with a with, with a demon, and you summon all three of them on me. It's either all three are dealing with one, or you got they got three demons and you summon all on me. I can't handle that. <laughs> Not by myself. If uh, think about it, three people can't deal with one demon, or three individuals got got a demon attached mm -hmm. to them. You send them all to me by myself. Now, if three of them trying to deal with one demon, they can't deal. What the hell, me by myself gonna do with it? 
You know what three, what I'm huh? Three. <laughs> or if it's three, what the fuck I'm gonna do with three demons now? I can't. Can't have. They can't handle one. Oh right? Lord. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I guess. Bruh. Recent accidents at, at oil rigs, and he's just he's trying to find a rational explanation for this bed shaking incident. He also can't help but feel like what happened with that thing I saw that was like touching my feet. Like he's not connecting the two events, but he has this weird sense that either something's wrong with him and he's losing his mind or something really weird is happening in his property. So as he's trying to find this rational explanation, his internet goes out. And what? so he tries troubleshooting it a couple times, but he can't get it to work. And so he calls a service provider to just have them see if they can fix it. And so he calls customer service, somebody picks up and they're like, yep, your internet's out, let me fix it for you. Okay. Let me put you on a brief hold. And so they put him on hold. And as he's sitting there, like listening to elevator music, like staticky sounds started coming through the receiver and he's just noticing it, it's nothing significant. But then a voice comes into the phone that is speaking in tongues, like nonsensical language and it sounds almost threatening. At some point, Bill is just totally unsettled by this voice because it's just going on and on. He's been on hold now for like two minutes of this weird voice and he just hangs up. And like in just a couple of seconds, he gets a call back from the same customer service rep that he had just been speaking to. And he, he had an accent and Bill picked up on it and said, hey, was I just talking to you? And the customer service rep was like, yes, yeah, sorry, we got disconnected. And Bill says, did you hear that, that voice? Did you hear that strange voice on the phone? And the customer service rep, who's mostly operates on a bit of a script, mm -hmm. kind of deviates for a second and says, actually, yes, I did hear that. And I was actually trying to figure out how that could have been possible because we use a very secure phone line when we talk to our customers and there's really no way for someone to actually block my ability to speak to you. Like even if someone was on the call, you would still be able to hear me and I was trying to yell to you and you weren't hearing me. So I, I don't know how that would have happened. If I definitely heard the voice, I don't know what that was and we're so sorry. So both of them are definitely weirded out by it, but you know, the customer service rep, he's got a job to do and he's like, hey, your internet works again. Thanks, talk to you soon. He hangs up and Bill's left with his internet working again, but now that's the fourth. Why the hell are you so jumpy? What's wrong? Why are you jumpy? You are crazy. No, why are you I'm jumpy? getting chills. Like, I got to chill because I'm cold. Like, I'm... <laughs> 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 okay. Am I scaring you? No. My goodness. I'm just wondering why you Strange jumpy. thing. He has the thing that runs across the room uh, as he's watching TV. He has the thing that ran across his feet at night. He has his bed shaking and now he has this like devil voice speaking in tongues on the phone that the customer service rep also heard and couldn't make sense of. He decides to, you know, I'm, I'm done doing research for the night. It's, you know, three in the morning or whatever it was. I'm gonna just try to get a couple hours of sleep uh, because this is just starting to freak me out a little bit. So Bill gets back in his bed and he's trying to sleep but he can't stop thinking about the fact that there have been four strange occurrences in the span of just a couple of hours. And he, he can't help himself, but start to feel a little bit worried that something that he doesn't understand is going on, something bad is going on. And as he's sitting there desperately trying to sleep, he swears he can hear some sort of sound underneath his bed. He knows it could be his mind playing tricks on him, but it doesn't matter. He thinks he hears it and, it, and it's now he's officially spooked. Like a child, he pulls the covers over his head and he's just laying on his bed with the covers over his head, just basically trying to convince himself like this isn't happening. There isn't anything under your bed. Just relax. Nothing's happening. He's got his legs sucked up, you know, up near his chest. He's just under his sheets. And he, the way he was positioned is he had left a light on in his room and there was a light basically beaming down uh, onto the sheet that was over the upper part of his body. So there's a little bit of light into the cavern under his sheets. And so he's holding it up over his head. And as he's sitting there, like trying to, trying to tell himself that nothing's going on, he looks down towards the foot of his bed under his covers, right? And he sees a hand slowly reaching up from the side of the bed, come up and try to grab his foot. And it just misses and then retracts out from under the bed. Bill literally leaps out of bed, flips on every light, and is now in just absolute crisis mode. He immediately is like up against the wall, doesn't even want to look under the bed. But eventually he does, he kind of pokes under, nothing's down there. 
He looks around his room. There's no sign of anybody in the room. And now it's like, okay, you've had so many strange occurrences and none of it makes sense. Like, what are you going to do? And he had no idea. So Bill does not attempt to go back to bed that night. He goes downstairs, flips on every light in his house, starts drinking coffee like he's awake. He's like, I'm not doing this tonight. And so he stays up the rest of the night. So the next day, Bill just tries to have a normal day. He doesn't want to think about what happened the night before. So he goes to work like normal, doesn't tell anybody about it. Again, Bill, he's a straight shooter. He's not about to be, you know, the former NASA robotics engineer. It's like, hey, let me tell you about the paranormal stuff that's happening in my house. He's just, he's doing everything he can to not think like that. And so by the end of the day, he, he started to feel a little bit of anxiety as he's getting ready to go back to his house um, because he would have to potentially face some of the strange things that happened the night before. They could happen again tonight. And so he gets home, has all his lights on. You know, he's not he's not about to keep his lights off and he's sitting in his in his chair. He always sits in the same one where he was watching TV and saw that thing dart across the room. He's sitting there and he's eating his microwave dinner and he's watching TV, again, all the lights on in his house. And he looks down for a minute to get another bite of food. And when he looks up, a bottle is zinging towards him and he moves his head out of the way and it hits the wall beside him and it breaks. It's a glass bottle and shatters on the ground. And then all the lights in the house go out. So Bill runs to the closet where he knows- Okay, what the hell you look, doing, I can dodge a little bottle. Man, you done turn my lights out? What you doing, Oh, uh, you, you. You want some problems here? Yeah. Look. What you going? What you going to do? See? What you going to do? You getting up? Take your head out of hell. <laughs> Cause I ain't fighting no demons. <laughs> I'm sorry. Shatters on the ground. And then all the lights in the house go out. So Bill runs to the closet where he knows he has a flashlight. He opens it up, reaches for the flashlight, and as he's about to pull it out, he hears in the closet, towards the top of the closet, this loud slamming sound. Oh, no. And he had a couple pretty heavy boxes on the very top shelf in his closet. And it sounded like someone had almost lifted one up and then slammed it down on the top shelf. But obviously he didn't do that and it totally freaked him out. He grabs the flashlight, shines it in the closet. There's no one in there, there's nothing in there. And he backs out and then the lights come back on and his heart's racing because he knows what just happened. Someone just threw a bottle at his head. You know, someone just slammed something in his closet and he's in full panic mode. And so the only person he can think to call is his brother because he's not prepared to go to the police because the things he would need to describe are kind of nonsensical sounding. Mm -hmm. But his brother, who's very rational, equally kind of pragmatic in his approach to everything, he calls his brother and he's like, get over here. I got some weird stuff happening in my house and I just need a sanity check. And so his brother, Bob, his younger brother, Bob, he comes over. And as soon as Bob gets there, Bill is like, he had never had a discussion about the paranormal with his brother before. So he's just like, all right, this is gonna sound weird, but Bob, I need you to just go in this closet and just, just go in the closet. And Bob's like, what in the world are you talking about? And Bill's like, please, just go in there. I'm gonna shut the door and I want you to just tell me what happens. And so Bob's like, all right. Bob goes in the closet, Bill shuts the door behind him. Bill's just out there waiting. And Bill calls to Bob, hey, uh, turn off the light. There's a little uh, pull string, little tiny light bulb. Turn off the light in there. So, you know, Bob's like, all right. Turns off the light and it's pitch black in there. And so at the time, Bob would not tell Bill what happened to him in the closet. Mostly because if you put yourself in Bob's position, he doesn't have any of the context. He doesn't have anything that happened. He's never experienced anything like this before. And so what he experiences, he kind of chalks up to probably his own doing. He doesn't think that someone did it to him. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is he's in the closet and he feels something hit his leg. And he thinks, oh, I must have knocked into something that hit my leg, mm -hmm. like a pair of shoes or something. And he's just standing there. And then something hits him hard in the face. And he thinks, oh, you know, I must have, I must have hit something on the top shelf that fell and hit me in the head. But the two things combined, it did unsettle him a little bit. And he consciously decided, I'm not going to tell my brother Bill that this happened because I'll only feed into his own paranoia right now. And that's not what he needs. Opens the closet, gets out, and he's like, you know what, Bill? Nothing happened in there. You got nothing to worry about. There's nothing in here. And so he leaves and Bill is left kind of crestfallen because he feels like he really didn't do a good job conveying to his brother just how much had happened in the house so far. He basically said, ah, I've, heard, I've heard some strange noises, go in the closet. And then nothing really happened. So he feels like out of his element. He just feels like he doesn't know how to handle it. 
And so he has only one other person that he feels comfortable kind of letting in to this situation because it was just kind of embarrassing for, for Bill. I mean, he's this esteemed NASA employee. The last thing he wants is to have somebody think that he's like losing his mind a little bit. But he has his friend, Michael, who is a sound engineer that worked for a couple podcasts. And when he calls him, Bill doesn't even really know what he's gonna say to Michael. He just needed to talk to someone, like a friendly voice kind of thing. And he But anger holds you. If I'm Bill, I don't trust my brother now. Nick, I told you what I'm going through. It's not about you trusting him. You can't, you can't even believe in what I It's told. not about you trusting him or not. I, I wouldn't say that. It ain't got nothing to do with that. It's just the fact that he didn't want... Like, at the end of the day, I have to go home, and you have to be here. I want you to still feel at ease in your own house. Nah, bro. You know if what I'm, I'm saying? If I feel, feel like I'm experiencing something, and you but experience something... But you didn't tell something. him much. You just said, I'm hearing some strange But I'm noise. telling you, I'm experiencing something. It, I hear strange I noises. You. Okay? You hear the names. No. <laughs> yeah, they be loud, but no. <laughs> gonna say to Michael he just needed to talk to someone like a friendly voice kind of thing and he calls him and, and Michael's a little bit surprised to see Bill calling him and they have a little bit of small talk and uh, Bill says to Michael you know I, I don't know how to approach this with you but I just I, I moved to Arlington and I got some weird stuff going on in my house and I just I guess I'm just telling you because I don't know what what else to do and so Michael's like a little bit caught off guard and is a little bit just worried about his friend uh, and he starts asking him some basic questions, just, oh, well, what have you heard? Like, you know, what have you seen? Just not really sure if it's even remotely worth exploring, but just asking some basic questions. And as they're having this exchange, the voice that came on the phone during the call to the customer service rep for the internet provider came on the phone. And all of a sudden, Bill can't hear Michael and Michael can't hear Bill. All, all they both hear is this voice, this like, angry kind of demonic sounding voice that sounds very threatening and so while this is going on michael just instinctively is like well i have all my sound set up here and he grabs a mic and he puts it to the receiver and starts recording and for a minute and a half he sits there recording this voice and then about 30 seconds into the recording not that michael could hear it bill on the other end who's heard this voice before and he's starting to, he's starting to get the feeling that this whole thing is bad like it's bad and he starts yelling to Michael to hang up. Don't listen to this. Hang up. Hang up the phone. Don't listen to the voice. He's yelling for him. And then after about a minute and a half of this chaos that Michael's recording, the voice suddenly stops. And it goes back to Bill and Michael talking to each other. And it's like crystal clear. And so Michael immediately says, hey, Bill, you there? You there? And Bill's like, yeah, I'm here. I was trying to get you to get off the phone. You, you can't listen to this stuff. I don't know what it is, but it's bad. And Michael just goes, no, listen. I recorded that. Here, let me play it back for you. And so he starts playing it back and it's silence, except for when Bill was yelling to Michael, don't listen to it, hang up, hang up, don't listen to it. And Michael is yelling in the beginning to Bill like, hey, what is that? What is this? But then it's all silence in between. So they aren't speaking to each other, even though they're on the phone with each other and they hear something, but the recording that. only picked up their voices not the demonic possessed sounding that's crazy but that's it can happen like that though it can happen it you know what i'm saying i don't know that's just crazy though and it will make anybody feel kind of weird mm -hmm. i don't know man the recording only picked up their voices not the demonic possessed sounding voice at this point bill is starting to get a little bit scared. Maybe he wouldn't admit to it, but he's alone in this house and all the strange stuff is happening. And he just decides that he's gonna invite uh, his brother over for dinner. And Bill is in the chair that he always sits in and Bob and his wife, Cindy, are on the couch and they're kind of having a nice time. Bill recalled feeling, you know, just, it was just nice to have other people in the house. And they're watching TV and as they're watching TV, suddenly uh, Bill just stands up and kind of runs over to the room where he had originally seen that thing dart by, this rodent or whatever he saw. And Bob and Cindy obviously see him get up and run over and they're like, hey, what did you see? What, what was that? And Bill's like, okay, I don't know how to describe what I saw, but I saw this thing that's in my house. And, you know, Bob, I brought you over here because I've, been, I've just been seeing this animal or something running around my house and I swear I just saw it. 
I swear I just saw it. And he goes, hey, look, Bob, sit in my chair. Because it was the only vantage point into this room, the, the couch where Bob and Cindy were sitting. They couldn't really see into this room. And he goes, just listen to me. Bob, sit in my seat and just, just sit here and just watch the TV. Don't pay attention to the room. Just watch the TV and, and just see if something catches your eye. Because, you know, maybe, maybe I'm seeing something that is totally rational, but something's happening. Just do what I was doing. And so Bob's like, all right. So he sits in the chair. Bill sits next to Cindy and they start watching TV again. And Bob, all of a sudden, just clearly reacts to seeing something in the other room. And he goes, oh, my God, what is that? And they all stand up and, and Bill is like, well, what'd you see? And Bob's like, I, I don't know. It was like some kind of small animal or something. And it looked like it was on two feet. It did not look like a four-legged animal. That, that's like a two-legged animal. Like, what was that? And so Bob, he's now feeling like, I was in that closet, some weird stuff happened that I didn't tell Bill about. Now this, and he's like, okay, Cindy, his wife. Cindy, you sit in the seat, you do this now. And so now Bill and Bob are sitting on the couch watching Cindy and Cindy's watching the TV. Of course, in just a matter of minutes, she sees something dart across the room. Now, was she just kind of jumping on the bandwagon because these two saw it? Maybe, but she certainly described the same thing that Bill and Bob claimed to have seen, which was a bipedal uh, small creature that was just running through the dining room. And so the three of them, turn on all the lights and they start searching the house. They're, they're gonna find this animal or thing in the house and they search everywhere for hours and they can't find anything. Finally, after, you know, it's getting late, Bob and Cindy are like, hey Bill, I don't know what's happening in your house, but why don't you just come stay with us? We got a guest room, just crash with us tonight and you can come back in the morning and call animal control or, or whatever you wanna do, but just, you shouldn't be here tonight. Why are you looking at me like that? Well, I don't know if he go in and be like, no, I'll be all right and stay at home. But it, sometimes like, it ain't taking, about work. You no, like, I'm taking up on that offer. No, I won't say that. I'm oh, going to say yeah, it's not yeah. about, it's not necessarily your home, it's you. They be attached to you. Mm. So where no matter where you go, baby, they're going to find you. If if you believe in that type of stuff, y'all, yeah, because you know. But. Weird <laughs> things happening here. Bill, in a way, was actually kind of happy because now he had someone that he trusted and loved, his own family, that had confirmed that they were seeing the same things he was. That even though that is terrifying, that all of a sudden Bill is alone in this house with some creature, this small bipedal creature running around the house, at least he wasn't losing his mind. Or if he was, at least other people were too. <laughs> so he was kind of relieved and he was like, you know what, I'm not gonna go with you because I don't wanna just like give up my house. What will I do when I come back if it keeps happening? Like, I don't want to just give this up. So Bob and Cindy leave, and now Bill is determined to now, for the first time, start looking up paranormal explanations for what was happening. So quickly, Bill realizes that you can't just search the paranormal. There's too many things online. It's so hard to tell what is considered, like, credible and what True. isn't because there's just no fact checking going on. It's just people kind of True. putting things on the internet. And so what he decided he would do is instead of him doing the research, he would find a paranormal investigative team that at least appeared to approach their investigations much the way a scientist would. That instead of looking for proof, you know, the paranormal exists, instead that their approach would be like looking for an answer, even if that answer was totally normal. And so he starts researching for investigative paranormal teams that have a scientific focus that are in Texas in the area. And he actually finds one and he reaches out to them and they were actually available that night to come over. So he says, please come over, I need your help. So the leader of the paranormal team was a man by the name of Brian Hall. And when they get there, it's Brian and a couple of his, of his crew members. They don't start with, you know, diving into the paranormal investigation side. They start by looking for obvious answers because they've found that many times when someone claims they have a paranormal event happening, it's something like, you know, a bad AC unit or a creaky door or a branch outside that's rubbing against the house. And so they did a very lengthy and thorough examination of the outside and inside of the house looking for things like that. And they determined that there wasn't anything obvious that was a rational explanation. So now it warranted setting up some equipment. 
And so what they did is they set up a couple of cameras in uh, Bill's bedroom where a lot of the activities apparently was happening. And they set up these laser beams that basically beamed lasers in every direction and they would place them in his bedroom. So there was like laser beams all over the room. And if anything walked past any of these lasers, you would see the beams move and it's very obvious. So it's a way to detect motion in the room. And so they set these, these beams up and they start filming and for a long time, nothing is happening. Bill, Brian Hall, the team are just sitting in the dining room downstairs, just like listening to silence and watching mm. nothing happen. And so Brian suggests, hey, you know, why don't one of his team members go up and just literally interact with the room a little bit. Go in there, kind of like yell, do something, kind of stir it up, so to speak. And then we'll see if anything happens. And so one of the team members goes up to the room and walks in and is like, hey, is anybody in here? And you know, nothing's happening. You can see on the footage that, you know, he jumps onto the bed and he's sitting on the bed. And at some point, as he's yelling out to whatever was in the room, like, hey, if you're in here, show yourself. All of a sudden on camera, you hear a laser fall. And he jumps out of bed and they, he runs out of the room and the rest of the team comes up and they gather up the cameras and they immediately watch the footage. And as they're watching the footage, you can see this mist that begins to form in the room that the team member who was in there just didn't see and the mist starts swirling in front of the laser beams on the camera before you hear off camera one of the laser beams falling to the ground. So at first they're they're just kind of dumbfounded and they're like, well, how did the mist get in there? Like, what is that? And, and is it possible that perhaps the, the laser beam rolled off a table or something? Maybe it was positioned in such a way that it could have rolled off. And so what they did is they raised the sound levels inside of the actual video and they made out uh, a couple of words. And so at this point, Brian Hall and his team. Who coming? So baby, it's it's not, baby, put it back, he's coming. What they mean? So would you have step, step foot in his house? Because my thing is, all right, even though the, 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 the spirit is attached to Bill, right? Mm -hmm. If you believe in that type of stuff. If you believe, yeah. Could it possibly have jumped onto somebody else and followed them out? You know what I'm saying? Maybe it's something about them they want to be attached to. You get what I mean? So you willingly putting yourself at risk of... You know, you get what I mean? I, I do. So... But I don't want... Yeah, I do, but... You're like, I don't want to go into that. Yeah, I don't want to go into it. But I'm just saying, couldn't it possibly happen, though? You like not ne not necessary. I mean, possibly. Yeah, let's. Yeah, maybe, <laughs> maybe. I feel like they have quite a bit of data that actually does lend credibility to the idea that there is something paranormal happening in Bill's house. So as they're packing up to leave, they say to Bill, "Like, you gotta go. You can't be here. Like, I'm surprised you're still here now." And Bill just was this super prideful guy and he just was like, no, I'm, I'm gonna stay. Like I've made the decision, I'm not gonna run. I'm gonna stay here in this house. Mm. And they're like, that's a bad idea. And mm -hmm. honestly, they were right because some pretty horrible stuff happens after they leave. So that night, he knows he's not gonna sleep. So he has all his lights on in his bedroom. He's sitting with his knees tucked up to his chin. He has upbeat music, like classical music, but very upbeat music playing on the radio right next to his bedside. And he's just trying to like kind of create good vibes in his room. And so as he's sitting there, he hears what sounds like a Mack truck smashing into the side of his house. Like it was so loud and just deafening that he instantly sprints out of his door, runs downstairs, runs outside to like inspect the damage to his property. And nothing's outside. There's nothing. There's no Mack truck. There's no damage to his house. There's nothing. He walks all around his properties. Like, did something fall on the street? Am I losing my mind? Like, what's going on? And so he goes back in the house after quite a bit of looking around, seeing if something might have fallen off of his roof that made a sound. Nothing. He goes back in his house. And as soon as he steps foot in his house, he hears a similarly loud crashing sound as if, you know, a vehicle is smashing into his house except it's inside of his house in his dining room. It was in the same room where he first initially spotted that thing running across the ground. And so he runs in there to look for some horrible damage to the inside of his house. 
but there's nothing disturbed. There's nothing shaking, there's nothing out of place. His dining room is intact. And as he's sitting there, he hears his car alarm go off outside. And now he's thinking, this thing is screwing with me. I'm not gonna let it win. I've stayed here against better judgment for multiple days. I'm not gonna give in now. And so Bill kind of goes into fight mode. Now he's mad. And he's, instead of being scared of what's happening, he starts screaming at the top of his lungs, like, show yourself. And so as he's doing that, he hears yet another loud crashing sound up in his bedroom. And so he runs upstairs ready to, you know, fight with whatever this is in his house. Cause it's just, it's gotten to a breaking point for Bill. He charges in his room, there's nothing in there. But unlike the dining room and unlike when he was outside, the crashing sound continues while he's in the bedroom. So he's standing in his bedroom, holding his ears and the deafening crashing sounds over and over and over again, but there's nothing moving. There is no way for the sound to be emanating from that room, but it is. And after what feels like an eternity of this horrible smashing sound, it just completely stops and it's dead silence. And Bill like lifts his hands off his ears and he's looking around and you know, he's expecting it to start again, but it doesn't. And it's just dead silence in the entire house. After quite a while, and he still doesn't hear anything, he gets back in his bed, all the lights are on, you know, his radio's on, and he tucks his legs up to his chin and he's just like holding himself basically in the fetal position. And he is, at this point, he's now just petrified. Like he had his big fight moment, but I think he's, he's now thinking that this thing was just challenging me back. It's basically saying, I can do whatever I want to you and you can't touch me. I can do whatever I want, you can't touch me. And he's realizing that maybe he could have made it worse. And he's sitting there knowing he's not gonna sleep. It's still the middle of the night. And he starts hearing a noise that sounds like maybe shuffling, a shuffling of feet, sh something's moving around underneath his bed. That motherfucker taunting you. Like, come on, motherfucker. Come on. You know what I'm saying? Gee. <laughs> you will sit up here <laughs> nervous. No, I'm not nervous. I'm not nervous, but I am a little like On the spoon I would have took. I mean, after after they told me, look, mm -mm, I would have been like, you no, you right. I'm going to my brother. <laughs> shuffling, a shuffling of feet. Sh something's moving around underneath his bed, and as he's as he's sitting on his bed at the head of his bed near his pillow with his feet tucked in, he looks at the foot of his bed, and this huge just wide six foot tall black figure emerges in pure, it's bright in the room. Yeah. This black figure emerges at the foot of his bed. It's got this huge tooth coming out of its mouth and it gets into this jerky position and starts moving towards Bill. And it gets right in front of him and it puts its face right against Bill's and then grunts and then disappears. Bill continued to see this horrible black figure in his house and it continued to kind of challenge Bill and Bill stopped challenging it back. And so Bill started waking up with these scratches on his chest. He, uh, he was hospitalized a couple of times, prompting the hospital to do welfare checks on Bill because he was showing up with these like mini heart attacks because of the stress that he claimed was from having this stuff happening to him. And you know, his family's so concerned. And it wasn't until Bill started really doing some aggressive research on demons that he read about uh, exorcisms. And he remembered that when he showed up for that house call, a lot of the language that he was hearing coming from that woman who was screaming, um, you know, leave these people, leave this house, it sounded like an exorcism. And he was thinking that, do you think it's possible that the exorcist knew that she needed another host for these demons? Mm -hmm. And so she planned it so that she would have this water purification person show up right at 5 p.m so that she could be at the part of her exorcism where she could cast the demons onto him. After two exorcisms of, her, of his own to his house, he, it still hasn't stopped. He still, to this day, uh, has, is dealing with the paranormal activity in his house. And when asked why he hasn't sold his house, is he thinks that he couldn't live with himself if he ever put another person through what he has dealt with at his house. I don't know about you, but I would not have lived in that house for an additional 18 years. That just sounds like the worst. But you know, I am, I'm not Bill, and right. so he's made up his mind that that's what he needs to do. But for me anyways, I would have left that house. I would have abandoned that house more than likely. But I'd love to hear what you would do in that situation, and I'd love to just get your feedback on the story. 
Uh, it's interesting when you have a story like this coming from the mouth of someone so credible, like a NASA robotics engineer who's inherently right. skeptical, um, and having lots of corroborating evidence. I'd, I'd love to hear what you all think about this particular story and whether you think this is true or just something else that's totally rational and easy to explain. Love to hear in the comments. That's going to do it, guys. Before you go, what you think you see? What you think you see? <laughs> um... I don't believe, let me say this. Yeah, you go ahead. I don't believe even if he moves, it stops. I think it follows him wherever it goes. Uh, because just because you, if if it is a demon that's attached to you, uh, not just the demon's going to stay at this home. Yeah. Because if that was the case, when the woman uh, did the exorcism, she would have cast it out and would have stayed inside her home. She needed a host. Yeah. Only way he gets rid of the demon, he has to now cast the demon into another host as well. Mm -hmm. So basically the same way you got the demon attached to you now, mm -hmm. you have to in return. Or the demon has to be pissed off by somebody else where he abandons his original host and latch on. Latch on to that other person. You get what I mean? I hear you. Yeah. No, I get you. I feel like I hear you. Spit your, spit your thoughts to you. I mean, I don't really, like, what is there to say, really? You know what just I'm saying? Just thoughts and opinion. He said, leave your thoughts. So leave your thoughts. <laughs> what did you ask me? What What are your thoughts? Do you I, believe I, it's true? Do you believe Oh, you asked true? me, did I believe it was true? I think, did I believe it was true? Possibly. I know people be like, everybody don't believe in stuff like that. But just from personal experience, I've seen stuff like this before. So, and I don't know if the person, again, I've seen it with my own eyes. They could have been putting on. But at the same time, I've seen it with my own eyes. And I know that stuff like this can happen. People, like paranormal stuff within your house or you yourself, like the woman was casting the demons out of somebody else or whatever the case may yeah. be. I have seen that happen in real time with my own eyes. And in that sense, they were casting out. It was a room full of people. But at the same time, I don't, it didn't get like... That, once it was, you don't know, though. That's what I'm saying. Because I'll like, say this. Because I... I'm, say, I'm like, say the place. Say the place. Where you was at. Oh, at church. All right. At church. Get some Years place. ago. But, some like, it was... It was a room full of people. But at the same time, they, they were, like, advising people do not come close to the woman like do not come close to her like they had us you know whatever and some people remove themselves because people do you know believe in stuff like this but you know being curious and stuff some people were kind of like looking just to try to see what she looked like in a sense and she didn't look like herself like oh uh, so you were one of the people being nosy I, I, cause I'm a curious person and I'm mm -hmm. always trying to like, so like, so we, that, whatever demon, I'll say this, whatever demon they probably possibly cast out that day can also have jumped onto somebody else within that church. Possibly, but because, you know, because did nobody ever have like, explain as, as you know of. Well, I stayed at the church years later, and, but and everybody it might not showed itself the same way it showed itself on that individual. Yeah, you know true. I mean? Again, if you let me speak from people like just being themselves, coming whatever, it didn't seem as so. It didn't seem that like it got on anybody else. But again, it possibly could have. Who knows? But she was back to herself. So I don't know. I don't know how that works. Everybody don't believe in it. It is what it is. I mean. I am. Um, I do believe in spirits and stuff, and whatever, I, do, I but, say this: if, you, if, if if any individuals uh, consider themselves religious, or mm -hmm. especially in, in, a, in a Christian faith, yeah, you believe in, uh, especially when, if you ever went to the altar, prayed, and they somebody mm -hmm. laid hands on you and stuff, you you have no other choice but to believe in this this stuff because mm -hmm. it's the same notion of yeah. Laying hands, praying over you to, to, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So when it's crazy how like you know what I'm saying, church people be like, I don't believe in all that stuff. But I'm like, you believe in what you like, you believe in it, but you don't believe in it because it's about who who's saying whether it's yeah. true or not. So 
that that part of it is kind of like uh, it's the ignorance of it. Um, but you know what I'm saying? Like I do believe you know what I'm saying. Sometimes when people are praying, praying mm -hmm. demonic spirits off people mm -hmm. or ways off people, mm -hmm. you can like nonchalantly you could you are also are taking possibly taking that off and putting it on somebody else that yeah. might not especially kids you mm -hmm. because if you're not one who's praying yeah. and, and, and 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 the praying worship art part of it you can be then the demon all right let me go to this person let me go to this person let me yeah. you know what i'm saying whatever if you believe in that type of stuff but hey who knows man um and i have also, um, I don't know the person. I can't vouch yeah. for the person. But I've also listened to a story of uh, this woman basically tell like some kind of norm, kind of in the same sense as this. And she used to she'll wake up with like bruises and scratches and stuff like you know over her body. She couldn't explain it. Like she used mm -hmm. to feel stuff. She could feel like the cup, like just weird stuff happening to her. And she went to someone to kind of like see what was going on and. Whoever the person was, again, I can't vouch for it, something was attached to her that she had to kind of like, you mm -hmm. know, get removed or get cast off of her. But I don't know what happens in that sense. Like, like you said, like, do you need another host, another body to go to? Or do you just like go on about your, you know, mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. But, uh, yeah. This was. I I this I, is wild. I, I say yeah. this. I, I just hate it. It happened to him. Yeah. As an innocent being, Facts. You, like you literally came in to, to do, do a job, job, and you were the setup the whole time, and now Which you've been so stuck like, with it for eighteen years. And being the good person you are, yeah. You said I'm not gonna in return do, do it to someone, someone else. else. I've tried to do the exorcism. It doesn't work, and the only reason why it possibly doesn't work. Is that you need another host. And then it's like it's kind of like a thing. Like even if you go and report it to somebody, they're probably not going to believe. Well, you it. got evidence. You got you got family members who can vouch for you. Uh, you got evidence. You do proof. if the people so, yeah so kept the recordings. But then what y'all do? Y'all keep the house up and just because everybody for making money, so they ain't gonna tell the next person. You know what I'm saying? I don't think you don't sell it. But even if you sell the house, the it's still you the host, so it's gonna follow you wherever you go. Yeah. So. That's how it works, supposedly. So, I don't know. Supposedly. Nothing you can do about it. Sadly. Uh, yeah, I don't know, but this is wild. Yeah, man. Hey, man. Make sure y'all spam us up. Y'all let us know y'all thoughts about it in the comment section down below. Uh, if you believe in it, you don't. Yeah. Let it. Let your story be heard in the comments, man. But as always, y'all know how it go, man. I do go with the name DJ Kid. This is it. We are. 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 We are